Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. If we truly want to bring forth change, it not only starts with you and I, but it's also about the next- Hit the like button, smash that like button. Smash that like button. Everybody who just came in, man, make sure you hit that like button. Next generation. So I'm privileged to be joined by Magnolia co-founders, but more importantly, parents of five, Chip and Joanna Gaines. How are you all? We're good. Doing great. Thank you for- that beautiful white family, man. I watched this show too. Um, they, yeah, it's pretty they, good. They, yeah, exactly, man. Um, you know, he does all the work and she does all the talking, but it's a very good show, man. It is. It, it shows you how um, they um, it just it, it's just they the way they do it is very very engaging, man. It, uh, like a lot of those shows, like remember the twins? You remember the twins that you started show? Yeah. yeah, the guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah the two guys. Oh uh, yeah, I couldn't stand them. The, I think they were like Scott Arch. Brothers or something. We saw yeah. the Hearts twins. No, no it was like like, uh, like a real deal, like a home improvement yeah. kind of show. Yeah, home oh, improvement. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, but but th this show is I actually did like this show. I will give them credit. Um, so here they are. He had they brought the whole family to talk to this fucking. This is gonna be too. crazy. This is gonna be crazy Thank you for having us, man. Of course. Now you came with Drake, Gella, Duke, Emmy, and crew. And crew. <laughs> um Chip, why was it so important that you bring your whole family here for this conversation? Oh man, when I saw your video, and it's been a couple weeks back now, I can't believe how uh, time has flown, but I mean, bottom line, our family wants to hear what you have to say. And the idea about having an uncomfortable conversation with the black man, honestly, is exactly what we need for this exact time. <laughs> right. No. Wow. Wait, All right. Go, go get it. Yo, you, you, you can just go get carjacked, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No solutions. <laughs> Give me your fucking car. Why are you doing yeah. this? Yeah, man, it's just like, yo, this is, this is, Cringy. yo, you glad as a fucking strange, man. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> we do yeah, deserve slavery. Shocks me every fucking week. Yeah, oh, get a donut, okay, baby. go get a donut, little bro. Who's gonna go get a donut? He'll join us later. <laughs> He's like his mom. <laughs> Love my privilege. Um, Thank you. Now, uh, let's have the uncomfortable conversation. Okay. Joe, I know you have some questions. Yeah. So, you know, we've been having this dialogue with our kids, and, and Chip the other day, he was wanting to kind of get a pulse on what are our kids, what, what are they thinking about all of this? Um, and so he asked the kids a question. Hey, pretend like you're at a gas station and you see a black man and a white man. Um, are you more threatened by either of those two men? And the kids really quick all said, no, why? Like in their mind, that wasn't. <laughs> it's because uh, they're fucking wow. five, it you dumb like, bitch. It sounds like the parents are trying to make the kids racist. Like, it's weird. Like, that's yeah. crazy. But but let's be let's be realistic, though. Let, let's be re let's be objective in that question. Even the brothers will answer that question truthfully, man. If they're being yeah. honest. I'll be honest. I'll be like, son, man, right away. I'll be like, nigga. Yeah, son. this is like setting your kids up to fail. To get it's like, No, it's setting them up to get level, carjacked at, exactly. and killed at a gas station. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're just completely unaware of what's going around you. Yeah. Listen, I unequivocally, I'm not even going to fucking even mix words. Unequivocally. And more afraid of a fucking black man than a white man. Yeah. And I live in a town where there's nothing but white men. Um and I never in my life was gonna white man, to be honest with you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, I mean that's the that's that's real shit though. Like you already know, but we don't have to say like well, I mean, well, I mean, I think he means like to victimize you though. Like he doesn't think they're gonna put a gun in his face and rob him for yeah. his shit. Yeah. Or a straight even, bullet from a random glider. Yeah, even even like bikers, like if a brother like was pumping his gas and a whole legion of hell's angels pulled up in the gas station and shit, <laughs> that brother wouldn't be. Th that brother, I'm telling you, man, that brother wouldn't even think like he was in danger. Like we we so like like based based because he's not in danger though. Jeez. 
we might pull out our phone and shit and let's start taking pictures of these like videotaping y'all like yo look at all these hell's angels out here y'all ah, ah, little bikes ah. now, now now mind you chief mind you if though if the bikers one. attack if they get hostile and attack him that's a whole nother story but what are the odds of that though very low very low um because those those gliders they're they, they have a different frequency like the sun man is more likely to attack one of them, even though he's only one of him. Right. And they ought to attack him. Right. Um, and they didn't even think about that. And so later, Chip and I were talking, and this whole idea um, of this colorblind thing came up. Chip said, you know, I'm proud. I think our kids are colorblind. And then we started kind of pushing back on that. And I think our question to you is, I've heard other parents say that. They want to raise their kids colorblind. In your opinion, what's the best way to move forward with this conversation? I think that it's best that we raise our kids to see color because there's a beauty <laughs> in color and there's a beauty in culture. Yeah. This is wild. I'm first-generation American, and so I didn't grow up with any animals. I didn't grow up with any dogs. And so my sister got attacked by a dog when she was younger. So now as a 29-year-old man, I can't decipher between a dog that's a threat wow. and a dog that's just a pet Wow. because I didn't I hate grow up with animals. And I think hey, if we don't hey, see color, point. if we don't explain, I like how they're asking a sun man for like parenting advice. Man, what a cug. Yeah, this is all backwards. This is a cug right here, boys. Oh, God. Man. Those poor kids. Yeah, the man's. Yeah, the, the, you, don't you notice that the guy's not even saying nothing? Don't you notice that the guy's not even talking? Like, like the guy should have been like, like I don't know. That's why like, the, the woman's talking. I yeah. feel like that's disrespectful when a man yeah. is with his wife and, and, and yeah. it's another person. And a woman starts talking, or she's the one that. Nah, that's crazy. Yo, that's I should probably smash low key, chief. Mm. Yes, sir, man. This is this is this is about to get way way worse. Expose our children uh, to different colors, to different races. Then it'll be the same thing. As a white kid who becomes an adult, you won't be able to decipher the difference between a black man that's a threat and a black man. It's just black. Sure. A, a black person won't be able to decide Fuck. between a white person that's a racist yeah. sure. and a white person who's just white and may happen to be racially ignorant. So I, I think there's a strength, there's a beauty in seeing color. I don't like the concept of color blindness because colors and cultures are beautiful. It's kind of what makes us human. You exactly. know, everybody's got their own differences and uniquenesses. Yes. And even as you imagine our uh, kids here are five, each one of them have a different look. Each one of them have a different eye color. But, you know, each one of our kids have these uniquenesses. And maybe to your point, you know, it's okay to highlight those Correct. things, you know. I appreciate that. I've got a question in that, you know, if you asked anyone, even a racist, if they're a racist, I would almost argue, you know, that all of them would say no how do we how do what? we attack and solve a problem that I would say some people in our community don't even understand that we've got? I think that uh, in America, we have to remember history is meant to be remembered, but history isn't always meant to be celebrated. And I think that we have racism so ingrained into our culture, we don't even realize we're blind to it. I go to, I go to Nigeria every summer for a medical mission trip. And there was a sweet middle-aged Nigerian woman who, as I was escorting her into the optom optometry station to, to get glasses, she refused to get glasses. She was like, I don't need them. She was bumping into things along the way. Wow. Well, 30 minutes later, after we fit her for glasses, there was a huge smile on her face because now she realized she can see the full depth of life see all the dimensions of life, see all the colors of life. Sure. And I would argue that that's the same issue we have in America. Like my white brothers and sisters, until they put their glasses on, they can't see all the dimensions wow. Wow. of life. And so <laughs> they can't understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the biggest pile hey. of bullshit. Hey, shout out Hot Fire, man. He said it. Yo, this guy's shallow. This, but, but glad, this is, is that... Um, is that kind of like pandering, like acting like he's deep, or do they think they really think he's deep? We think they're just like, wow, the sun. Man, pan like honestly, it's pandering. Yeah, yeah they get a, like they try. Like we try so hard to see y'all's angle, and then when we get behind closed doors, like what the fuck are they even talking about? Yeah. Yeah. The full picture of oh. 
maybe having a school named after a Confederate general wow. that I have to attend as a black person, wow. maybe that's a problem. Sure. Maybe having statues littered across campuses that I have to look at of men who would have oppressed, enslaved, and potentially executed me. Maybe that's a problem. So I think that at a oh shut the hell up. Job, uh, executed like what? Discussing and placing our heroes. Sure, Manuel, that's powerful, man. I uh, have a quick story about cancer, and and cancer is not a real prevalent thing in our family. Is uh, I was in New York just a couple of years back, and I ran into a, a gal named Game. Gabe Grunewald, and she uh, explained to me about her uh, battle with cancer. And within just a few short years, Joe and I have become just huge advocates of cancer. And uh, we've been to St. Jude and the experience cancer that happened advocates. there. And something about your video, Emmanuel, I want to be real clear, was almost like that light bulb moment. I don't have a whole lot of personal experience with cancer and the, and the challenges that people face in that way. But I'm telling you, once I learned about it and I understood it and it, and it, and it affected my soul, I couldn't unforget it. And when I saw your video and even the title, An Uncomfortable Conversation with a Black Man, it was like there was a light bulb that went on in my head and i was like i think i've been blind yeah. to this reality for maybe my whole life and that's all we that's my goal of these conversations for your children for you for myself when you hear the phrase we've come a long way does that feel right to you like is that accurate we've come a long way i would say that it is accurate but it is incomplete it's accurate because there was slavery for 339 right. years and then after slavery there were jim crow laws. slavery so forever like, we've come a long way from slavery to jim crow and then from jim crow to the new jim crow the last 70 years or so wow. um that is coming a long way right black people are no longer enslaved however there's still such a long way to go i mean think about this for a second last week it was 53 years ago to the day that black and white people finally were able to be married um, this before we, we were spending the night here in Waco last night, and I thought about this for a second at, at a dear white friend's house, and I realized if this was 70 years ago, I would have been like executed wow. for that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like this dude is insane. He's happy to say that. He's like, oh yeah, they would have killed me yeah. back in the day. That's fucking cool. Like, like, this yeah, don't really you guys important. feel bad? Don't you guys want to like give me free stuff right now? Yeah, you know, his white friends staying with his white friends, he would have been executed for staying with his white friends. He's lying his butt off. Yeah, he is. His gosh darn tush off. <laughs> I'm trying not to get Ox <laughs> channel struck. His oh his God. booty is lying. Gosh darn it. His pants are on I fire. I just for a second at a dear white friend's house, and I realized this was 70 years ago i would have been like executed wow for that wow like just imagine that for us wow. sure. if this was 70 years imagine. ago imagine i'm so like, excited <laughs> they don't believe that she's like wow like this guy's nuts maybe we shouldn't have brought our family here maybe she just came by herself <laughs> god nuts yo that wow was that was a oh my god that was that wow was like was like literally. maybe this is a mistake yeah. <laughs> this son is his absolutely crazy to imagine him spending getting the night here in waco That's last just night and i thought about this for a second at, at a dear white friend's house and i realized if this was 70 years ago i would have been like executed wow for that Wow. Like, just imagine that for a second. Wow. Sure. If this was 70 years ago when I was staying in a white person's house in Texas as a black man, I would have been executed for that. So, have we come a long way? Absolutely. <laughs> what the fuck did he talk about? Yeah, that's, 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 that's so fucking ridiculous. I would, uh, I think you should, I would like to see you do this segment, but then you just go the complete opposite direction and you have like sons on the show with you, the son man who's not woke, and then you just berate them, make them uncomfortable the whole time. Oh, man. That's a great idea. They would say, please don't add this footage, man. Because, like, yo, know, you can't be, this family can't be seen having a conversation with me. And, uh, no. Well, no, not only that, but, like, you with other sons, and then you just sit in, like, a bulletproof glass cubicle while you do the show. <laughs> Is this, this video is only like seven minutes long, I think. Uh, is, it a, is it cut up? Is there a longer extended interview? 
Or is no, this is, this is, the, this is the, the video. Do we still have a long way to go? No doubt about it. But I'm hopeful um, to a degree because of this, yeah. because of interactions like this, and more importantly, um, because of you all. So I know, Emmy, you had a question uh, that you wanted to ask. Are you afraid of white people? Oh, whoa, whoa. That's what I love about Wait a second. children. I mean, that is. <laughs> Yo, he guy... got a lie. Yo, this guy deserves to be fired, man. Like, wherever he works, they should just fire his ass, man. Fire his ass out of a cannon. Get him out of here. Jesus Christ. This little white girl, come on, man. Come on, this is child abuse. Yeah. Because of interactions like this, and more importantly, um, because of you all. So I know, Emmy, you had a question uh, that you wanted to ask. Are you afraid of white people? Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's, that's what I love Wait about a second. children. I mean, that is a phenomenal question. Um, I'm not afraid of white people. I am cautious of white people. I, I think about water and electricity. Water, wow. um, necessary for life. Um, electricity, it's also necessary for life. But I do understand if those two have a negative interaction, yeah, it could be lethal. Dang. Wow. And so, <laughs> yeah. hey, I wonder who else he's cautious around. Hmm. Electricity, necessary for life. Hmm. What did they do before 1900? I mean, Jim and a crick. <laughs> yeah, golly gee. This is sick, man. This is a sick way. And he could have just played cutesy with that little girl and kept it cute. He still went all like. Yeah, these oh. questions are way far beyond a kid's ability to understand what's being talked about. Yeah, he went. He went. He should have kept it cute. Like, oh no, you know, it's so like, no, no, little Emma. Um, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of of. of even if he wanted to go walk, he could have said, but. 70 years ago, I would have been afraid. Like, I mean, like, you just said something like that. Like, you yeah, know, reassure like, the child. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. That's, that's what I love Wait about a second. children. I mean, that is a phenomenal question. Um, I'm not afraid of white people. I am cautious of white people. I, I think about water and electricity. Water, wow. um, necessary for life. Um, electricity, it's also necessary for life. But I do understand... If those two have a negative interaction, yeah, it could be lethal. Dang. Wow. And so <laughs> when I, I still might use my cell phone charger in the bathroom, you know, as a female, you still might use your, your, your curling iron or your blow dryer next to the sink. Sure. Um, but you have to remember if those two things ever have a negative interaction, Dang. it could be lethal. So <laughs> he'll never say anything more insane. That was fucking nuts. That's why bathrooms have a ground fault interrupter in there. So as soon as the current shorts out, it stops. You know, this is not only um, uh, it's not only pandering, but this is all this is all manufactured. It's not like they just came together organically. They, they, this family was paid to come over here. They knew what the subject was going to be. That question that little girl had, it was given to her. It's not like she came up with that question. I think it's all a, 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 a fake conversation, and they got paid to be here. It, it's not like they didn't know. Like They're actually here think, to talk about I think they're following a script, but it still yeah. is uh, indicative of a lot of things. Yeah, but, I mean, see, this family, they're like, okay, we can make a quick maybe, what, 100000 or something to be here. But they just don't realize what type of damage they're doing to society itself by this stupid, nonsensical conversation. Which yeah, is it's like all the actors in the movies that have all these scripts that they, they think are so awesome, but the scripts are actually filled with all kinds of perverted and woke bullshit, and they don't see how it negatively affects people that absorb it that aren't self-aware. Yep. I mean, this doesn't move the needle anywhere at all in any kind of positive direction no i just pushes it back it, this, this, this brings no value but just division and hate i mean what do you think some people are going to feel by listening to this it's not going to make them feel better or want to talk to gliders 
and gliders, all it's going to do is make them feel have more white guilt and 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 bend over more. And this is ridiculous. It's just it's hateful. The only and they're like, acting the like it's a good the, thing. The fact that the kids are there is just disgusting, disgraceful. It's kind of your exploitation is off the charts. Salute to Hot Fire, man. He says, nothing I hate more than a woke son athlete. Some of the worst identity politics in pandering. This is despicable. Yeah, yeah this and, and is, uh, this family is worse because they're just here for mo the money. They, they're they not, believe me, they're not here for free. They're here because they got paid. And they're going to make a quick little buck for 20 minutes of conversation and go go home. I don't Didn't know. You say See, that you, the, these people have a television show. Is that what you said? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think these people are here, like because they wanted to have this conversation. Because, like, you got to understand, they're, like, they're, they're, they're handlers, their company, they won't let them do this type of talk. It, it, it'll be in their contract. They have to go through the, these lines of, uh, of, 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 like, can we do it? Is in our contract? This is that type of conversation we're gonna have. They're not even talking about their true feelings. All they're here to do is listen to him and go along with what he says. And, and yeah, they have a huge it. brand. They're not going to get on yeah. here and say anything that could ever yeah. possibly be perceived as anything other than the status quo. But isn't this like their way of like getting whipped in like penance? Isn't yes, this like yes. penance? This is if you're a Hollywood glider, you have to do these things. Yeah, you're proving you're not racist. Like this is this is your way of saying like going in front of court. Like it's like you're appearing in front of the. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's he's a de facto um, like judge. He's a he's a he's mm -hmm. judging you who whether he's you're an arbiter. Yeah, arbiter. Yeah, this is like arbitration, and he's like, and they're like, you know, basically juggling and shit. They're like juggling in front of the fucking king and shit, and like, you know, what I'm saying? like the king's like, ah, uh, okay, um, you get to keep your head. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, you get to keep your head, and you also get a nice little <laughs> bonus. You're a bonus hundred thousand, and you pimp out your kids for this nonsense. Yeah, you notice how, like in the beginning, that he minimized the the notion that there could be like a negative outcome of interacting with a son at a gas station. But we have to spend all this time, like indirectly, passive aggressively insinuating like the underlying evil that exists within gliders twenty four seven. But don't mind the fact that you could get your brain splattered against a fucking post. Standing at a gas station, don't. That's a, that's a that's a minor inconvenience. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone here, in here, in that room, is terrified of some people. I think him as a professional football player, somebody with nice things, someone who you know, what I'm saying, who has a big nice house, someone who has nice cars, nice clothes, nice jewelry. I think he's terrified of some men coming and taking those things or robbing him for those things. And of course, they live in Waco, Texas. So they're scared of some people too. He's he's certainly cautious. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, man. Um, more than cautious, man. Like he has nice things. He's a millionaire. Necessary for life. Um, electricity, it's also necessary for life. But I do understand if those two have a negative interaction, yeah. it could be lethal. Dang. Wow. And so <laughs> when I, I still might use my cell phone charger in the bathroom, you know, as a female, you still might use your, your, your curling iron or your blow dryer next to the sink. Sure. Um, but you have to remember, if those two things ever have a negative interaction, Dang. it could be lethal. So I'm not afraid of white people. I'm just cautious. And I think the beautiful thing of children and about children is that we learn things as kids and it develops us as adults, sure. which is why you all being here with your children is the most powerful thing because this conversation could be life and not necessarily for their life, 
but for a life of someone who looks like me. Sure. Uh, Dre, yeah, I they know might go you had... curb stomp a sun man or shoot a sun man in the head. Or... <laughs> Fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> these kids are so, these kids, um, now that they've had this conversation, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the world's a safer place for sun. Everybody take a shot every time they say, wow. <laughs> Yeah, you be fucking you alcohol poisoned it, man. Because they're like they they know like instinctively, even if you're fucking like removed from sons and you just you know what I'm saying they they go to private school, a white private school, and they live in a white neighborhood, and then there's there's no there's not even any black cashiers at the Walmart in their town. It's it's still you know like wait a second. Yeah. I don't know anybody who's ever like harmed a sub person. Yeah, low key, these <laughs> kids are gonna be really uncomfortable. They're gonna be like, why is this guy saying these things? Like none of this is really like, they'll feel that it's not true and it'll just create such resentment. They're probably gonna hate some people. Yeah, because the way they're at the way he talks is like all at least the adults should be like, I wanna just I just want to give you, I just want to make a confession. Like, I have like three uncles that have murdered black people. Like, I mean, like, the, the, he, he he's talking as if it's always happened. Like, there's always this white on black violence everywhere you go. As if, like, like you can't escape it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's actually the opposite. Like, these people would know, like, and I don't know. Here's the thing. Are gliders that fucking, like, altruistic that they, like, don't think, like, wait a second. I don't know one person who's ever even slapped a black person on the fucking head. Or do they just, like, hey, maybe he's right. I mean, his that's his truth. And maybe we don't know enough, you know. Like, like, how do y'all? It's the pro- it's just projection. It, we we project all of our sensibilities and our trust that we exert amongst each other onto some people. So when some people like this dude get on these, you know, diatribes about all their experience and whatever, we think it's genuine and rooted in fact, and it's not at all. Yeah, it's sad, man. I feel bad for you. If y'all really believe, if you believe a sud, man, you're damn. Like, like that. But then, but then, like, we'll, we'll put on the performance. Like, glide. The one thing about gliders that gets on my nerves is like that fake politeness. Mm-hmm. You know, where they kind of like give you that small chat of bullshit that you know they don't really give a fuck about. Mm-hmm. But like a lot of times in this type of scenario, you'll kind of. Like we'll we'll play along, and then behind closed doors, it's like, yeah, I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Wow. Mm. I wonder a question as well. Yeah. Uh, so, with all that's going on in the world, um, do you have hope for the future? Come on, man! Don't 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 do this. Tell the kid that there's hope for the future. Tell this fucking kid. That yo, know, yeah, the future's bright, man. The possibilities are endless. Uh, the America's a great country. Sun man's winning. Problems, yeah. We're, we're we're gonna we're gonna march into the future, lockstep, arm in arm, and we're gonna conquer all this evil together. Come on, man. Tell them something good, man. Come on, bro. That question there tells me more than anything else. This is one hundred percent scripted. No, this ain't scripted, man. This is this is the questions is, are scripted. Oh well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, yeah, okay. The question might be scripted, but this guy is like they are still talking. faced with an uncomfortable he's just talking, man. with the sun man. Trust me, this brother just this brother just just out here. He yo, he's in heaven. He's got a rapt attention, white audience. You know what I'm saying? And he's in heaven. This is, he gets to tell them how bad it is. And this, he knows they're fucking eating it up. Yo, this is, this guy's in heaven. This is like Sun Man Nirvana, man. You don't the know question, Sun Man, man. The questions are definitely scripted. He's definitely um, 
had the questions before the show even started, and then he thought about the answers beforehand. So he, you know, it he gets to say whatever he wants, but they get this, they get the scripted questions. I think he's freestyling, man. Honestly, man, just from the way he's talking and his cadence and his and the things he's saying. I think he's freestyling. Sons are very good at freestyling. So it's yeah. like a lot of gliders. Gliders don't know. Like we can make shit up off the top of our heads. And and of course, you guys being less polished and less, you know, I mean, smooth, you may think that, oh, he's I've rehearsed that. No, nah, man. Some man just said that shit that second. That shit is coming to us in a stream of consciousness, man. No, nah, man, it ain't, it ain't, no, nah, we, we be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, no, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm sure he's heard the question before and thought about it, but yeah, he is freestyling his, his answers. But I mean, it, you know, he's got the gift of gab for sure. He, he wouldn't be in this position. Yeah, awesome but, man have yeah. that man. Awesome, awesome, uh, and have this to do. It's, it's a sun man trait. Let me not say all. Oh, it's a sun man trait. It's like, like it's like, on um, burritos are real short, right? Yeah, you might see a six foot five on burrito one way, but they more generally most of them will be short. It's like a some man trait. You dig what I'm saying? It's nothing. It's no big deal. Like he ain't special for being able to do this shit as a son man. I think that in other contexts, he said these same things. Like he's re he's really, you know, these buzzwords, talking points. This is like his mm -hmm. version of that. Yeah, yeah, they they build houses and like this is his contribution to society. Yeah, he listen. This right here. He know like for instance, if he was around a bunch of sons, right, some sun men, right, and he was asked like, you know, what I'm saying, do you fear, do do you fear sun men? Do you feel like the element, like, you know, thugs and shit? He would, because he was around sons and he knows that he can't show weakness, and he has to, um, there's a different dynamic. He would be like. He would probably say something along the lines of no, um, or he would play tough. He's being who he is allowed to be in every moment. So since he's around gliders and gliders are like basically sons kind of like think gliders are like, you know, like morons a little bit, but not like the way you think. We we, we know y'all are smarter than us. We know y'all have more intelligence than us. We know y'all have. Um, you're more reasonable than us, and we know you guys make better decisions, but we think that, like... We're gullible. In the, in the shrewdness, everyday, real nitty-gritty of every situation, like, that the ugliness of every situation, like, where you either nay or yay, we know we got y'all with that. So now it's like we got a room full of gliders. They're, they're wrapped attention. I'm about to fucking play the victim. I'm about to make these gliders think I'm how how bad they are and I'm about to fucking um you know what I'm saying get a liberal white liberal hug and I'm also speaking to the audience too. So I'm also using you. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to the audience to all the viewers and I'm using you as validation like you're sitting here and you're eating it and you're taking it. You're not pushing back. So, like, also the audience is like, hey, look, these motherfuckers is eating this shit up. You got to eat this shit up, too. It's really it's really devious and sick, and he's a bad guy for doing this. But in his mind, he's not. He doesn't think that, like, anything he's doing is wrong. And the power dynamics on this episode, I mean, on this show, you can just tell, like, they're all looking up to him like he has some. Uh, he like he's like some scholar Wisdom. and has some expertise on it. A guru, and, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a guru. He is a guru, though. If you think about, it, salute the deluxe two four seven, aka Cal Ripken, aka the real MVP, coming through once again. But he is a guru. Think about this. Think about this. Racism, guru. No racism, racism in America. They never see it. He's claiming that it's everywhere. Oh, do tell. Like, it would be like anything. It would be like, it would be like, like we were talking about earlier with fishermen, duck hunting. I don't know anything about that. 
you tell me, oh, anything he would tell me about that would be fucking, I would have, I would believe it. Like if Fisherman told me, yeah, you know, um, there's a special kind of duck that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it has it got an ass on his head, on his forehead, or shit, and shits out his beak, or whatever the fuck you would say. I would be like, "Hey, did you know? I tell my wife, did you know there's a fucking duck with ass on his head? Like, you, he, these people don't see this shit anywhere. They're around white people all the time, and if you're around white people all the time, you never fucking see racism. <laughs> okay, I'm around white people." All the time. Like, my city is like 90% white. I never see racism. The only time I see racism is if I go around black people. Hey, Ox, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Dada? Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys uh, said it, but you know this is a famous family, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, know. okay. I, I, I watched the show. No, nah, because it didn't sound like anybody was saying it until I heard um, yeah. somebody else. All right, I just wanted to make sure. That, yeah. In my opinion, it's 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 all scripted. It's Hollywood. You know, everybody's trying to make a dollar out of it. You know what I mean? But what he's saying is nonsense. Yeah, I listen. Listen, man, let me tell you something, man. If you're around white people like these people are, you'll never see racism. You'll never see any racism. You'll never see it, man. If so, these people, he is, he's the one, yo, he's got sees racism all the time. And and they, and maybe they can't believe it because they're like, okay, we're white, so we wouldn't see it. Him being black, maybe he sees it because he's black and people are being racist to him, but us being white, so we nobody would ever be racist to us, so we would never see it. So maybe they think like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's 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 what it is. He's saying that it's everywhere. Like this guy's not just telling them that it's kind of fucked up out there. He's telling them that it's fucking terrible out there. Nah, uh, yeah. I listen. I like I I, I mentioned before. Um, when I go to my mechanic, who's from Trinidad, and half of the customers, if not more, like seventy five percent, are you know, Spanish and black. And I asked them, who does the mass shootings in, in, in America? They all say white. And I'm over here arguing with them. And like, it's funny, right before the election, they they would joke about me. You know, they know I'm Spanish, but they they go, oh, you're a Trump supporter, you're a Trump supporter. Right after the election, a couple of months later, they all got buyer's remorse. I said, oh, yeah, you, you, you all got uh, gas prices and bills that are, that are stacking up. And y'all don't know nothing. And then when I argue with them and I try to show them the proof, they still won't accept it. Like the FBI stats show, you know, who's who's committing the crimes. And the they FBI still don't, stats don't get are it. Wrong, though. The FBI stats are low. Yeah, the but FBI it still shows yeah. it still shows that, you know, uh it's black on black crime, Spanish on Spanish crime, white on white crime for the most part. Right. And right. then you know what I mean. But they, they can't accept it. You know what I mean? It's that, that, you know, people in general, we all hate to be wrong. You know what I mean? That's true. And and the last thing you want to do is have something in your head and then somebody say something that contradicts it and then you're wrong and you, you feel stupid. You know what I mean? But people yeah. can't accept it. And, and I think that's the biggest problem. You know what I mean? Salute to Rudy, the vet Russo. He says, yo, these people are neighbors. He is a rich, successful son. Those are his neighbors. Ock, he don't live around sons. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that he lives around sons. I'm just saying that, like, uh, I'm, put it like this. He is a son, and he plays football. Well, he did play football. If you're in a football locker room, you're around a bunch of fucking son men. Salute to Paula Sandridge. He says, but Ock Nation family, support the nation and Ox platform. Join. Hit the like. Yeah, man. Hit the like. Join the channel. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You forget that uh, slaves or NFL players are compared to exactly. slaves. Directly compared to slaves. Exactly. Exactly. Um, let's see how he ends this and off, man. She She's but, half Korean. Right, right, right. But 
let's 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 see how he ends this up. Let's see if he can play nice, man. Like, okay, man, play nice with these people. These are nice people, man. They got their kids here. The kids are very respectful. Kids ain't even fidgeting. Kids aren't even fidgeting and twirling. They're just sitting there um, very composed, man. Be nice to these people, man. End it with a good, on a good note, man, with some hope. Being here with your children is the most powerful thing because this conversation could be life-changing. Yeah. And not necessarily for their life but for a life of someone who looks like me. Sure. Uh, Drake, I know you had a question as well. Yeah. Uh, so with all that's going on in the world, um, do you have hope for the future? Do I have hope for the future? I would say absolutely. Um, but I have hope for the future because of this reason. After I put out my first video, uh, I saw Chip retweeted. And uh, I reached out to, to you. And you said, I brought my entire family of seven together. Because 30 years ago, I saw the L.A. riots, and 30 years ago, I'm seeing these riots. Yes. And I will not let that happen again. Mm. Um, so do I have hope for the future? I do, uh, because of a man like your dad. Do I have hope for the future? I do, because of a, a woman like your mom. Wow. Um, but the only way to have hope for the future is if you all uh, listen to these people, if these people listen to me, and if I listen to them, then I think... We all have a lot of hope for the future. So, Amen. Chip, I thank you, um, first and foremost, uh, for being willing. Joe, I thank you uh, for being the, the matriarch of all matriarchs. And um, <laughs> I thank you all for watching another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. Uh, make sure to follow, make sure to subscribe, and make sure to ask your questions, uh, because the world needs all of us. So what do you think the odds are of him that he's dating a glider chick? Um, pretty high. Yeah, the odds are pretty high. I don't know. It. Let me look it up. The odds are fucking through the roof. I mean, it, but um, if he is actually, that's another question. Let me see. Um, or not even necessarily mm -hmm. glider. Any non-son. Like a model. He might be dating P. Diddy. We don't know. He looks kind of zesty. Kind of, I, I I have that vibe. I'm getting that vibe from him a little bit. Mm. I only see him with black girls. Like he ain't with. Hold on, let me see. He might be going the MLK route then. Yeah, I don't see him with no. Hold on, let me see. Mm. Yeah, I only see him with black girls, man. Um, I don't see him with no. I don't see him. Oh, let me see. Oh, he did go to the prom with a white girl. He did go to the prom with a white girl. So yeah. Um. Salute to him, man. That's 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 the only white girl I see him with. His prom date, but this, this is like a girlfriend right here. This one ex girlfriend right here. I don't know if this is this another girlfriend. No, this is a girlfriend right here. Um. So yeah, he's a mixed bag, man. He does a little bit, you know. It don't gotta be snowing, if it, you know what I'm saying, for him to go, man. He don't care, man. Um, yeah, man, he fucking, he fucking son, man. He could fuck. God damn, shit, man. He, he winning, man. Um, but yeah, um, let me see something. I did want to show y'all something else, man. Um, salute to everybody out there, man. Um, let me let me show you something else, man. Um, let me show you something else, man. Hey, you fisherman, you ever, uh, you ever shoot one of those geese? Uh, no, never goose hunted. But what goose specifically are you talking about? Like a can oh, Canada goose know, or a snow goose or a speck or what? I mean, I don't know. But whenever I'm like in the summertime jogging, like, I see a bunch of these geese. I was like, I wonder what they taste like. The ones with the is like the black neck and the black head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a Canada goose. No, I've never hunted those. I just have hunted ducks because I've never been in an area with a lot of Canadas. 
Yeah, man. Um, this guy right here, man. This son, man, he plays for the he played for the Washington Wizards. He was cut after being accused of stealing from Target seven times. Um, Washington Wizards guard Ryan Rollins has been cut from the team after he was accused of stealing from Target several times in three months. According to documents from the Alexandria General District Court, Rollins, 21, was charged with seven counts of petty larceny for items worth less than a thousand bucks. Ryan Rollins is accused of shoplifting household items like groceries, body wash, and candles twice in September, four times in October, and once in November. Although the alleged crimes were committed in 2023, the Wizards president, Michael Winger, said the organization just found out about it. Winger told the Athletic, we cannot comment on the matter on the basis of our roster decision. We do take our role very seriously as citizens of the DMV, representatives of our fans, and the team of our community can be proud of. These are expectations, not aspirations. Yeah, this kid, he got caught stealing and got cut from the team, man. It's bizarre. What a ne'er do well. <laughs> exactly. It's just like it's just weird, man. Um yeah, we gotta cut you from the team. You know, you play professional basketball, we gotta cut you because you stole like some deodorant from Target. Like what the fuck? Um salute to Hot Fire, man. Hot Fire says, sons are beyond annoying. They're more concerned with having uncomfortable conversations instead of productive conversations. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do what you do. Like we're not good at producing things, so why would we? we why would we want to have productive conversations? We don't. We're not 